Hi guys, welcome to Joshua's Tech Tips. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to adapt a USG to a cloud-hosted unified controller. This is especially useful as it helps you to automate your unified deployment. In my previous video, I showed you how to set up a cloud-hosted unified controller. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to leave a link for it in the video description. As usual, if you found this video useful, be sure to like and share. Also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released. And now without any further ado, let's get into the video. This is our unified cloud hosted controller that we had configured in a previous video. We currently have no devices adapted to this controller. So firstly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the right hand corner and I'm going to add a new site. I'm going to name this site Vikings. Then click submit. We are now logged into the Vikings site. On the left hand corner of the screen, we want to click on settings. And this is our default site settings. So I want to change my country to Trinidad and Tobago. This is where I currently reside. As well as I want to change my time zone, which is La Paz. Under the Providers Capabilities tab, here you can enter your bandwidth that you're currently paying for with your ISP. I'm currently paying for 100 megabits per second up and down. Next, click Apply Changes. Next, click on the Networks tab. And here I want to edit my default 192.168 network. To do this, click on the Edit button. I want to go to the Gateway and Subnet settings and instead of 1.1, .1, I want to change it to 10.1. And remember, this is completely optional. This would give me 254 addresses, and this is more than enough for my current network. Currently seeing that the range is still set to 1.1, .1. if I click Update DHCP range, the values would be changed. Also, I want my DHCP range to start at .50. This allows me to reserve those first few IP addresses for any devices I have on my network, such as servers, etc. Also, I want to change my local domain to vikings.local. In the DHCP Unify Controller tab, here you want to enter the public IP address of your cloud-hosted controller. This is a very important step. Then click the Save button. As you can see, our network changes have been saved. Next, I want to click on the User Groups tab. By default, anyone connected to our network would get unlimited bandwidth. However, I always recommend setting up a guest network. This is perfect for users that you want to give access to your Wi-Fi. However, you don't necessarily want them to use up all the bandwidth, you know, so by setting up a guest network, you could give them Wi-Fi access and limit how, many, how much bandwidth they have access to. To set up a guest network, simply click on Create New User Group. So you need to give the user group a name. I'm going to name mine Vikings Guest. And next, you have the option of setting the bandwidth limit. For both upload and download, I'm going to set it to 20 megabits per second, which I think is more than sufficient. And click Save to save your changes. Now that our guest user group has been set up, we want to go to Wireless Networks. First, I want to create our primary wireless network. I'm going to name it Vikings and I'm going to change the security to WPA Personal and set a password. Click Save. Next, we want to set up our guest wireless network. 
I'm gonna name this Vikings Guest. And I'm gonna create a WPA personal passphrase again. So here we have some additional steps. I'm gonna click to apply guest policies as well as I'm gonna click advanced options. And if we scroll down, we want to change the default user group to the Vikings guest user group that we created earlier for the bandwidth limitation to take effect. Click save. And there we have our two wireless networks successfully set up. Moving on, we want to power on our USG and connect our modem to the one port of our USG. Also, we want to connect our computer to the LAN port of the USG. If we head back over to our Unify controller, click on the Devices tab. you notice we currently have no devices adopted to this controller. Bring up a command prompt. You could do this by typing in CMD on a Windows machine. Enter the ipconfig command to verify your IP address. As you can see, our gateway is 192.168.1.1. This would be the IP address of a USG. Open a web browser and enter this IP address. Click Advance and proceed. As this is a cell sign certificate it's using, so this is normal to see this error. So we're currently logging into our USG to make some changes. And here's the main tab of the USG where we'll see a lot of different statistics. What we want to do is we want to click on the configuration tab on the left hand side. If you look at the bottom, you'd see an inform URL field. Here you need to enter your public IP address of your unified cloud controller. You need to enter it in the exact format that you're seeing there, which is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address colon 8080 forward slash inform. Click apply changes when you're finished. We're now getting a message telling us to adopt the gateway on the Unify controller and come back here and click confirm when we have done so. So we're going to head back over to the controller. I'm just going to reload this page. And here we see that the USG is pending adoption. So I'm just going to head back over to the right here and click adopt. Next, I need to head back over to the USG's dashboard and click Confirm. And we get a confirmation message saying that the Inform URL has been set. If we head back over to our controller, we see that it's currently adopting. Give it a few seconds for the adoption process to take place. If I reload the page, I'm now seeing that I have no internet connection. And this is expected. We want to open back a command prompt. Remember, we had an IP address under the 192.168.1.1 range before, but our new range would be 192.168.10.1. So we're going to do an IP config forward slash release. This is to release our old IP address. If all is well, we should get an IP address with the 192.168.10. ID. Once you enter the ipconfig forward slash renew command. And there it is, we were successful getting an IP address under the new scheme which is 192.168.10.50 and our gateway is 192.168.10.1 meaning the USG successfully got the configuration from our cloud hosted controller. Next, if we head back over to the controller dashboard and click reload, there we can see our USG has been successfully adopted. Next up, we want to disconnect our computer from the LAN 1 port of the USG and connect our Unify switch. Then we want to connect our computer to another port on the Unify switch. Within a few seconds, you should see the switch show up pending adoption in the controller. We 
want to select the switch and click the adopt button to adopt it. Allow for a few seconds again for the adoption process to take place. I'm just going to reload my page. And there you can see the switch was successfully adopted. Last but not least, we want to connect our Unify access point to the switch. You should see it show up in your dashboard pending adoption. Go ahead and click adopt. Again, allow for a few seconds for the adoption process to take place. And as you can see, the access point has been successfully adopted. Now that all our devices have been adopted, I want to set aliases for them. To do that, select the device and select the configuration tab. I'm just going to name my firewall USG. I'm going to name my switch. And remember, this what I'm doing is completely optional. However, it is very beneficial, especially if you're managing a larger network. It allows you to identify devices more easily. And last but not least, I'm going to name my access point. When you're finished naming the devices, just allow for a few seconds for them to be provisioned. we head back over to the main dashboard, here at a glance we'd see that all our devices have been successfully configured and are operational. Last but not least, let's do a speed test on these networks and see if we are getting the expected speeds. So first I want to connect to my Vikings guest network because we set that to 20 megabits per second up and down. So let's see if we're getting close to that speed. So I connected to the network and I'm just going to open my speed test app. Select go. And as you can see, we're getting close enough speeds to the 20 megabits per second that we set on this network. Next up, let's test our main network, which is the Vikings network. I usually get um, 90 something megabits per second down and one something up. So let's see if that's what we're getting because this is currently set to unlimited. There are no bandwidth restrictions on this network. And as you can see, we're getting the expected speeds on this network as well. Well, that brings us to the end of this video, guys. If you're interested in purchasing any of the unified equipment used in this video, I'm going to leave links for it in the video description. Also, if you found this information useful, be sure to like and share this video. Please also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, as well as clicking on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released. Thanks again for viewing, guys. See you on the next one.